Hi, everyone. Welcome to this little intro for class 11, which is going to be about ways to use astrology for healing with different modalities, how to read the wheel for body healing, sound of the voice matching your own natal chart. So your voice matches your natal chart, which is really esoteric knowledge. And I'll help you go through that and understand how to balance your own instrument. We are live instruments and we have to understand what notes we are missing through our natal uh, wheel. Learning the music notes of the houses. So, so once you understand that every house has a music note and this all ties into Pythagorean uh, circle of the fifths. Okay, so we're doing class 11 and I just wanna do a little intro on some interesting things I discovered about astrology, music, and alchemy. So there's three pillars in alchemy, right? And this is important to understand. We want to go up the middle pillar. And here we have Saturn. Saturn holds the key when, she, when Saturn's Capricorn. And Saturn is also Aquarius. And if you took the Kabbalah courses, you'd understand that that's the fish hook. Okay, so that's Aquarius and Capricorn is Saturn here, uh, the green lady in the middle. And that's how you get out, out of time and you stop your relooping to be back, take, coming back to just keep constantly coming through um, with your memory not intact, right? You want to be able to retain your memory and get out of time because Cronus is Saturn and Capricorn. He controls time and he controls this realm. He's basically the devil in the tarot cards. Venus is at the highest point of the ladder here because your heart has to be full of love. And she represents love. And then Mercury is down here uh, at the bottom of the ladder. Now, there's these ashlar like um, stones. Okay, This also... I'm. Not sure if it's Saturn or Mercury that they're representing, but they have um, aspects of developing your virtue and your personality and your knowledge so that you become fine chiseled stone rather than this rough stone. And I'm going to go into some of these um, understandings. Okay, so the middle pillar is the Ionic pillar. The Corinthian would be ruled by the moon. The Doric is ruled by the sun. So you want to go up the middle pillar. And I'm going to go into the music that aligns to this middle pillar. Okay? It's really important to understand the, the circle of fifths because by playing music or listening to certain types of music, you can really heal yourself. And this is what this class is all about. It's about healing and, and understanding how to heal through your own sound, through your own vibration. Okay. And again, I wanted to go over this again to show you that this, these, these uh, pillars, well, these stone cubes are chiseled out. And, you know, we always see the Saturn cube on the angle like this. And this is why I'm not sure if this cube is representing Saturn, because there's, this is a Freemason cube. Okay? So it really is not you know, just a Saturn cube, randomly a Saturn cube. This is this is definitely to do with Freemasonry and your own great work that you have to go through. Okay, so now if that is Mercury, okay, I'm not sure if it's Saturn and I'm not sure if it's Mercury, but Mercury is a big part of the Pythagorean math, okay? So this is what I've discovered. So there, it's... To understand who Mercury is, okay, he's Hermes, he's also Thoth, and Thoth was, in Egyptian mythology, the one that created the pyramids, okay? so and the ancients knew Mercury by different names, depending on whether it was an evening star or a morning star, so we always assume Venus is the evening star and morning star, but Mercury is also an evening star and morning star, it's harder to see, so the bright morning star is always considered to be Venus because Venus is easy to see. 
but he does have uh, evening and morning star aspects to him. Okay, so you have to understand that he has a cycle where he gets in front of the sun and behind the sun. So they knew the planet as stillborn, meaning twinkle. So the twinkle, twinkle little star has to do with Hermes for its uh, fleeting motion, a name that is retained in modern Greek. The Romans named the planet after the swift-footed Roman messenger god Mercury, which they equated with the Greek Hermes. Okay, so he's always got the caduceus, which is the healing symbol um, in all the medical uh, symbol, you know, now it's uh, caduceus. So he's the healer. And then they, you know, they took the, the symbol, um, the caduceus away, and they're now using this Christian cross with his little face and the horns on top of his head. Okay, that's the Mercury alchemic symbol. So Mercury and Hermes are tied to Apollo. Okay, so noted for his impish character and constant search for amusement, Hermes was one of the more colorful gods in Greek mythology. While still a baby, he stole his half-brother uh, Apollo's herd of 50 sacred cattle. Okay, and then he clever cleverly uh, reversing the hoof marks by adding bark shoes to make it difficult to follow their tracks. And Hermes, therefore, became associated with thieves and he managed to keep the stolen herd of cattle under the satyrs, finally discovering it in a cave in Arcadia. So he's a trickster. Okay? He's associated with trickster. Um, then Hermes was permitted to hold on to the herd um, if he gave Apollo his lyre. Okay, so Hermes always played music. And this is why it, he's associated with music. But there's another reason. And it's a more mathematical reason. Okay, so here you can see Mercury is closest to the sun. So he has an effect on the sun. According to Morris uh, Cotteler, he actually is pulling the energy of the sun. And his theory is that the pole of the sun, the North Pole and the South Pole, move slower than the middle of the sun because of Mercury's um, attachment to the sun. Okay. And they're, they're kind of saying it here, but they're not going into that much detail. But they are referencing that there's a point to the sun and Mercury. They have a relationship. Now, Mercury is your mind. He's also communication with, with Gemini. It rules communication. He's also your health with Virgo, because Virgo is the sixth house of rules health. So there's a, a music aspect to him with your health. Okay, so this is why I'm saying that understanding music and understanding the notes that you're missing in your natal chart is really important. Okay, so he has like an 88 Earth day, days, uh, his orbit. Okay, so number 88 is always associated with Mercury. It's the shortest of all sun's planets. It is named after the Roman god Mercurius, god of commerce, messenger of the gods, the mediator between the gods and mortals, corresponding to the Greek Hermes. Okay, so he's the messenger, and he's also to do with immortality. Now, Mercury rotates in a way that is unique in the solar system. It is tidally locked to the sun in a three to, to two ratio spin orbit resonance. Okay, now this is where it's important because three to two in Pythagorean math, or the music of the spheres, has to do with the circle of fifths. Okay, so this, the, if you understand music, the circle of fifth is where you develop harmony, is always through the circle of fifths. And I'll go into that during the class and explain it all so that you understand how to use the circle of fifths for your own healing. Okay, now they're talking about it here. The perfect fifth is two to three. Um, and then you can see it here, how they use the geometry. This is all tied into it. And there's the twinkle little star is the perfect fifth. Okay? So twinkle, twinkle little star is, is actually about Mercury. So now Mercury rules Gemini. Now Gemini, we know is Pollux and Castor, but he's there also can be Adam and Eve, 
They can also be Apollo and Diana, okay? They're, they're the twins, okay? So Diana is associated with the moon. Apollo is associated with the sun, okay? So you can see these, the, the Gemini twins as the pillars that we were talking about before, the Corinthian and the uh, Doric pillars, okay? That would be the sun and moon pillars. Now there's, there's the lyre there. This lyre, I bought one actually. Um, you can get a pentatonic lyre, which every single note that you pluck never sounds bad, okay? Because it's all tuned to pent, which is the circle of fifths, okay? So you can see how the circle of fifths is really important, okay? So I wanted to let you see that. And then I found um, a painting, Apollo and Diana, and he has the liar, okay? But they're, they're really the twins of Gemini as well. You know, there's layers of mythology. And of course, in our realm, they verify mythology all the time. So back in uh, 1965, the Gemini astronauts were 16 pilots who flew in the Project Gemini with NASA. And the second human space flight program between projects, Mercury and Apollo. So we have them all. Right? Mercury rules Gemini. Apollo is part of the Gemini constel constellation. Uh, constellation. Okay, so this is how it all works because they verify uh, the mythology in our own reality. Now, Mercury um, has a pattern. He has like, like a um, three-sided triangle pattern in the sky. And this, if he does it twice, ends up being the Star of David. Okay, So Venus ends up making the pentagram, but Mercury ends up making the Star of David. So it's important to know because these two stars are always in religion. Now, what I found interesting... I mapped out all the times where he turns into the morning star, Lucifer. Well, it could be Lucifer. I don't think so. Lucifer is really Venus, but he's in the morning star position, right? So you could say, well, maybe he has some type of aspect of Lucifer to him. And that's like hidden knowledge. I can't find any reference that he is Lucifer. All I know is he's the morning star. So, uh, you know, there's, He's the morning star as well as Venus is the morning star. So maybe he is Lucifer. I don't know, but it's just something to think about. Or maybe he is Jesus. Okay. Now, because Jesus says he's the morning star and Lucifer says he's the morning star. So these are two things in the Bible, two passages in the Bible. So maybe he's Jesus. Okay? So this is where my brain goes. I'm, I'm going, okay, how can I verify that he has some association with Jesus? So when I was mapping out the morning star positions for him in six orbits, okay, um, he ends up making 19 of these patterns, okay? Now, what was interesting, when I took, mapped out uh, six years of his positions into morning star, he does it 19 times, okay? So... That's interesting, okay? So you have the number 19 associated with Jesus. So Thoth, you know, would make sense that he's Jesus because Thoth is also Buddha and uh, Varakota and uh, Quetzalcoatl and, you know, many different beings, okay? So maybe he's Jesus as well. So there's always a reference to, you know, biblical in astrology. So I wanted to just, um, you know, Give you a little briefing on what this class is going to be about i think it's an important class if you want to understand astrology in a really broad aspect i'm also going to talk about medical uh, astrology and what the planets represent in your body so you can use these modalities and branch out further and go into more studies but you have to have a basic understanding of astrology to to grasp these topics and okay? these modalities if you don't you're going to get lost when people are talking about it so these this class is really to help you 
get the basics so that you can move on and work with the music. And then you can also work with the medical astrology as well. And th these are aspects for, for healing through astrology. So it's not, astrology isn't just about knowing thyself. It's about using it to heal yourself. But the music aspect of it is super important. The sound. Okay. And you can see this in the churches. The, the, they actually to tone their bells in the towers all to the Pythagorean circle of fifths. Okay. So there's, it's really important because they know it heals. And there's studies obviously done that it does heal. So, oh, I hope you join the class. No, I'm going to do it on Friday, this Friday coming. So um, join up right now. Uh, the class is posted to sign into. I'm having a little problems about getting the classes posted up, but if you've taken the class and I can send you the charts directly through email. So I'll see that you've registered and then I'll send you everything directly through email if it's not posted for you to have access to. And I'm sorry about that. My website is not um, coming up to date as quickly as I would like it to but you know we're almost at the end here so we've got four more classes after this and then uh, it'll be there for you to access whenever you choose to so thanks for listening and I hope everybody's doing well and uh, bliss to you hope everybody's healing and uh, kind of just developing the consciousness of just finding your own way and kind of just being an observer of what's happening everywhere instead of getting attached to it. And I think I do feel that people are uh, starting to manage to do that more. I see a lot more happier people um, just online and stuff. And I think it's really important because uh, just stay above it all, right? That's the whole key to it all. But knowing yourself is really important part to that. So if you haven't taken a reading yet, you know, please sign up and take a reading because it's really important. You'll have your, your map of your whole life in front of you and that will stay with you for, for life, right? And you can always refer back to it to find out why you're having issues with your body. Just look at your charts and try to understand what your charts are trying to teach you so that you can heal and get yourself in perfect balance. Signing out. Bliss to you. Take care. Bye.